Good morning, good morning, good morning, DLCM family. It's third Sunday. Here we are, and God has been blessing us this month. I know this word has been rich to you. I know that it's been a lot, a lot of content that you have received. I hope you've been taking notes, going back, re-watching the live streams to receive more information and more revelation of God's word. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So make sure that you're doing that. Listen, go ahead and hit that share button. You know, that is our thing. As soon as we get on our live stream, we want to hit that share button because us sharing it will bring more people to the possibility of receiving Jesus. Christ. It's week three of our Rethink series, and God is going to bless us. Go ahead and type in the text box. I'm ready for this word. I'm ready for this word. Go ahead. Type that in the text box. I'm ready for this word. And I believe that God is going to bless you tonight. Listen, again, I say those of you who attend on Sunday, I need you to come back with us on Tuesday. Make sure that you're in the place on Tuesday. Our Thrive Revival is going on, and God has been blessing us. I don't want you to miss out on the blessing. All right? Thank you so much. Make sure you're bringing in your non-perishable items. All right. We're going to feed over 200 families. I believe that whatever God gives us to do as a part of the vision, we are going to get it done. Watch this and exceed the goal. Let's exceed the goal. Let's let's wow uh, ourselves in what God has called us to do. All right. Make sure that you're praying again for your leaders. Pray for uh, your founders, Apostle Norbert, Lady Simmons. Pray for your leaders, myself and Lady Ashley, that we will continue to do what God has called us to do. Thank you so much. Let's have church. God is gonna do. Father, the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for everything that you've done, doing, and yet going to do in each and every one of our lives. We glorify and praise you, God, for truly this is the day that you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we just want to thank you for blessing us to be a blessing, God. We want to thank you, Father God, right now for the heavenly angels assigned to each and every one of us, God. We glorify and praise you, God, for this day, for this is the day that you've made, God, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our healer, Lord. God, Jehovah Rapha, Father God. We just want to thank you, God, for being everything, everything we need, God. We thank you for being the one and only true and living God. We praise you, God, for who you are, God, who you are in each and every one of us, God. We thank you for being Yahweh, God. We thank you for being Yeshua. We thank you for being the Paracletes. We thank you for being the one and only true and living God. We thank you for being one and only true and living God. We thank you, God, for the angels assigned to each and every one of us, Lord God. We thank you, God, for the winds of heaven blowing upon each and every one of us, Lord God. We thank you for coming for angels being assigned to the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord God. We thank you right now, God, for the assignments on each and every one of our lives, God. We intercede right now, God, for souls, God, being saved, healed, delivered, and made free, God. We glorify and praise you right now, God, for leaders, God. We pray for pastors all over the world, Lord God. We pray for our shepherds here, God. We pray for our overseer, Lord God. We just want to thank you, God. We stand in the gap right now, God, for those who don't know you, God. We thank you for souls being saved, God. Healed, delivered, and made free, God. We just want to thank you, God, for healing, God. Healing, Father God, minds, bodies, and souls, God. We thank you for everything, God, that you've done, doing, and gonna do in each and every one of our lives, God. We glorify and praise you, God, for things we don't go, God. We just want to thank you, God, for everything, God. We want to learn to trust you, God, for everything, God. We just want to thank you, God, for the word on each and every one of our lives, God. We know you praise your word above our night yard. We thank you, God, for your word won't return until you void, God. God. We know you place your word above your name, God. We know your word will stand when all else fails, God. We want to stand flat-footed and firm on your word, Lord God. We glorify and praise you, Lord God, for everything, God. We trust you, Lord God, for everything, God, with our very lives, God, with our very existence, Lord God, with our very being, Lord God. We glorify you right now, God. We trust you, God. We thank you, God, for everything, God. In Jesus' precious, all-powerful name, we do pray. 
Hallelujah, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, God. So let it be. Hello, Deep Family. Join me in saying our mission statement. Our mission is to impact our city with effective life-changing ministries, to make and to nurture humanity into disciples of Christ, to usher humanity into economical and spiritual empowerment, to embrace and meet the holistic needs of all humanity. And we accomplish this through our vision to teach, reach, love, and serve. Hello, DLCM family and friends. This is Sister Renee Barrett, the Outreach Coordinator. On behalf of Apostle Simmons and First Lady Gwen Simmons and Senior Pastor Aaron McNair and Lady Ashley McNair, I just want to gently remind you and encourage you to not forget about our upcoming event in November. Yes, the Thanksgiving giveaway. It will be held November the 21st at 12 noon until it runs out. And you may be asking, well, how can we help or support this endeavor? I'm glad you asked. We're asking for items such as macaroni and cheese, yams, green beans, cranberry sauce, gravy, potato, sweet mashed potato flakes, corn, and even stuffing, and also rice. You know, those items that make for a great Thanksgiving meal. We're asking that you drop those items off here at the DLCM admin office, Monday through Wednesday from 10 to 5. The last date to be collecting these items will be Wednesday, November the 18th at 5 p.m. So come on, DLCM family and friends, as you have done before, let's do this again. Let's get those items in here so that we can continue to impact our community for good as we continue to exercise our motto of teach, reach, love, serve. Thank you. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is worthy to be exalted, worthy to be honored, worthy to be adored. Father, we come before your presence now when we bow at your feet. We sing with the angels that you're holy, that you're holy, that you're holy. We worship and we adore your name. Great are you, O oh God, in all the earth. Oh! 
Listen, I want you to praise God right where you are and thank God for our founders, Apostle Norbert E. and Lady Gwen Simmons. Uh, give God praise for them. And then let's thank God for our First Lady, Lady Ashley McNair. Uh, as we go to the Word of God, let's pray real quickly. Father, we thank you for this day, for the many blessings that you have given us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come together in the spirit of unity. We give you praise. We give you glory for what we're going to receive tonight. Speak to us from heaven. Give us a convicting word that will push us further into action to complete the assignment that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. Let's go to the word of God tonight in Mark's gospel, chapter 9. Mark's gospel, chapter 9, verses 14. I'm actually going to read tonight. Let's, 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 let's do some reading tonight. Uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 9, verse 14 through 29. All right, let's, let's read this story tonight, and we'll dwell on this story here. Um, verses, verse 14, and when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and the scribes arguing with them. Immediately, all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he will, has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him, the boy, to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has, he been, has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse so that most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. I want you to look again at verse 18, if you would. It says, whenever and whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I asked the disciples to cast him out, and they were not able. They were not able. I just need you to type my, my title tonight. Just type my title tonight in the comment section. My title is, Don't Let Me Down. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. There, there uh, years, ago, years ago, growing up in Goldsboro, North Carolina, there's a popular funeral home that still exists today. Um, the name is Rhodes Funeral Home. The owner, Mr. J.B. Rhodes Sr., was a very witty man. He, along with the late Thomas Ward, hosted a Sunday morning broadcast, and every Sunday at the ending of the show, Mr. J.B. would end by reminding the listening audience that in life you will experience many people that will, for whatever reason, let you down. He said family will let you down, friends will let you down, your employer will let you down, even the church will let you down. But here at Rose Funeral Home, we promise to be the last ones to ever let you down. In the midst, in the midst of Mr. J.B.'s humor, it's a load of truth. 
life is filled with letdowns. In the 1960s, uh, if you introduced a new product to America, 90% of the people who viewed it for the first time would believe in the corporate promise. Then 40 years later, if you perform the same exercise, less than 10% of the public believed it was true. The fracturing of trust is based upon the fact that the consumer has been let down. This little survey clicked in my mind when I considered uh, that George Barner asked the question that if 95% of Americans believe in God, then why? is 95 to 100 million Americans of all ages still unchurched. Could it be, could it be that once some people are let down by the church, they don't give us or you, the church, a chance to let them down again? Now a let down is different from a put down. Let down is different from a put down. But one will oftentimes give birth and reason to another. Uh, A letdown is to have heightened expectations disappointed. And a put down is critical remarks, which many times comes as a result of being let down, as it does in our text for today. Now, the first thing to establish, to be established, is the fact, first thing to be established is the fact that we need to care about letting people down. We, we have to care about it should touch our heart when we let people down. Now, take these, take these things down, if you would. Five things that we need to care about. Five things we need to care about. Number one, not producing expected results. Not producing expected results, whether it be in work, whether it be at home, whether it be at church. Not producing expected results is number one. Number two... Not disappointing people's faith in you. Not disappointing people's faith in you. It it means something and it pushes people even the further when they have faith in you. They have an example to follow. Number three, shaming people who have invested belief in you. Invested belief in you. Number four, people who have become Better because of their perception of you. Some of us, people have seen our lifestyle, they have seen the way we live, and they have changed their life based upon their perception of us. Number five, failing and feeling fine about failure. The heart of God is readily seen concerning failure when he says in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. With all thy might, with all thy strength, with all thy power, with all thy valor, with all thy force. Reason being, there is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, which is where we're headed. Mm, Lord have mercy. So if we uh, first care, if we first care, we will then succeed at not letting people down. You, You have to care. You have to care. All right. Would you write that down or would you type that in? Don't let me down. Type it in again. Don't let me down. Now, in our story today, which is found in each one of the synoptic gospels, I have chosen Mark with reason to exegete on today. Matthew gives his account with less detail surrounding the issue. Matthew jumps uh, right in and right out. He leaves out the argument surrounding the incident. Also, in Matthew's gospel, the boy is styled by his father as a lunatic. Luke's account, he mentions the crowd, but not the argument. But Luke does identify that this is the man's only son. And he gives or he goes to give spiritual identity to the source of the problem. Luke records that the father says it is an evil spirit that keeps seizing the child. But Mark gives me more to work with tonight. He gives us more to work with. He points out that all of the disciples were not at fault for the embarrassing failed effort. Because three of them were with Jesus at the time of the incident. When Jesus and the three returned to the other nine disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. Among the crowd were some of the teachers of religious law. The problem was... 
These people were not just standing around. They were arguing with Jesus' disciples. They, they were arguing with Jesus' disciples. Now, uh, you need to know that the Christian life is a land of hills and valleys. In one day, a disciple can move from the glory of heaven to the attacks of hell. When Jesus and the three returned to the other nine, they found them involved in a dual problem. Number one, they were unable to deliver the boy from demonic control. Right. Number two, and those scribes were debating and arguing with them and perhaps taunting them because of their failure. Now, note the text. The Bible says that the moment they saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed in awe and ran over to greet him. But Jesus cuts through their greeting, cuts through their flattery, cut, cuts through and boldly asks them the question, what are you arguing about? Now, the record plainly tells us that the scribes were there, but none of them spoke up in the face of Jesus. Now, they, now before Jesus gets there, they're, they're raising a lot of sand. They're, 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 they're doing a lot to, to get on these disciples. But when Jesus shows up, they don't say anything. And, and that's just like religious people uh, in, in, in the church and in the world that can raise $100 worth of hell, but cannot uh, say anything when proof shows up. So the scribes, the scribes say nothing, but out of the crowd, the boy's father steps forward and he says, I'm the reason, I'm the reason for this commotion. He says, I, I got this all stirred up. You see, I actually came here to see you, Jesus. Mm. So you could heal my son. He is possessed with an evil spirit and that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. The boy starts foaming at the mouth, grits his teeth and becomes rigid and becomes stiff as a boar. Now, again, I came here to see you. Uh, but you and your boys were off at a field trip. So I went to those, watch this, who were chosen by you. Since you and your disciples were not here, I went to, uh, well, since you and your boys were not here, I went to your disciples. I went to them. I didn't go to the scribes for a solution. I came to those who belong to you. I didn't go to another physician. I came to those who belong to you. I didn't run to the Epicureans or the Stoics. Uh, I came to those who belong to you. I didn't take my problems to the Muslim society. No, I came because I came to those who belong to you. I didn't gallivant into Scientology, the Illuminati or Buddhism or Jehovah Witness, but I came to those who testify that they belong to you. They were called by you. They were saved by you. They were anointed by you they were sanctified by you they were commissioned by you I came to your disciples Jesus and asked them to cast out this spirit but your disciples could not mm. Lord have mercy your, your disciples couldn't do it and I can't understand why they couldn't do it when you have given them authority in your name have you ever stopped to wonder how embarrassed Jesus may have been during this point you ever stop to wonder how embarrassed he may have been first of all i need you to know that when jesus initially addressed the crowd he was intentionally shifting the focus off of the disciples onto himself so he was taking the blame off the disciples and placing it on himself that anything that fell all the repercussions in with Jesus. Uh, I, I want to show you that in this text how our failures, our failures can hinder other people's faith and progress. Let's look at the text. Jesus says, you faithless people. Now, it is questionable if Jesus' words were directed to the crowd only or, and not just the disciples. He said, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? If my disciples fail you, where is your faith? 
Mm, Lord have mercy. If my disciples let you down, where is your faith to get it done? Now, now let me tell you something. Now, uh, whenever someone that represents Christ fails, you cannot take your faith off of Christ. You cannot lose your faith in Christ. You cannot lose your faith in the church just because somebody who represents him has failed. We are human and those who represent Christ will fail. But it doesn't mean you snatch your loyalty away from Jesus Christ. He asked him the question, if my disciples fail, where's your faith? Hmm. Where's your faith? Bring the boy to me and let me see uh, what you're working with. So they brought, I'm just telling the story tonight. They brought him to Jesus. They brought him to Jesus. And when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it did what it should have done when it saw the disciples. <laughs> it threw the child to the ground into another fit. It was afraid. It was alarmed. Jesus, not even alarmed, not even alerted, calmly asked the question while this boy is going into a fit. He calmly asked the question, how long has he been doing this? How long has, he been, how long has this been going on? The father answered and said, since he was a little boy. The spirit has been trying to kill him. Lord, have mercy. Then the father messes up and shows Jesus what he was working with. He says to Jesus, have mercy and help him if you can. <laughs> now, I need you to check out Jesus' response. He says, if. No, if. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus lets the boy's father know anything is possible if a person believes. Uh, but here is, here is where I run to the man's defense. I want to run to the man's rescue right here uh, because we have formed uh, years of persecution by many preachers. We have capitalized on this current lack of faith in this man. But I want to surmise through study and revelation uh, that faith can be interrupted. Mm. Faith can be interrupted, it can be tainted, it can be compromised, if it can be left in limbo if at any time it has been let down. I'm going to say this again, faith can be interrupted, faith can be tainted, faith can be compromised, faith can be left in limbo if at any time it has been let down. Lord have mercy. See, you have to remember before you jump on this man because he said if you can, before you jump on him, you got to remember that this father left home because he believed. Faith was the stimulus that led him to leave his house. So he left home because he believed. He traveled whatever distance with a possessed demonic child because he believed. He came looking for Jesus not on a whim but because he believed. His initial words to Jesus was, teacher, I brought my son to you so that you could heal him. No initial doubt no initial fear no initial disbelief no initial wavering of faith never before now does the word if come into play <laughs> Lord have mercy it, it wasn't until after he was let down by the nine disciples that his verbiage changes to if you can all right now Jesus lets him know that you've been let down by the failure of people but don't you let down your faith and the father realized it was prudent that his faith be strong and he yells out to Jesus I do believe and if there's any unbelief in me help me overcome it right now this story goes on to say that Jesus heals the boy and when he gets back to the house when he gets back to the house alone with his disciples they asked him the question. They asked him the question, what happened? What, Jesus, what, what went wrong? What, why couldn't we cast out this demon? Look at the Jesus' simple reply that Luke doesn't really record at all. Uh, you, see, you see, Jesus says to them, now, y'all let that father down. You let that father and little boy down because this kind 
only comes by prayer. Hmm. Matthew says Jesus told them it was a problem with their faith. Now, I need you to understand this. Undoubtedly, the disciples had a measure of faith. But here's the full revelation. In effect, he said to them, you don't live close enough to God. Lord have mercy. Think about it. They, They had been equipped with power, but they needed prayer to maintain it. Lord have mercy. The warning, uh, the warning thought out in the text is the disciples failed to nurture the power with prayer and thereby power vanished at the moment it was needed. You see, in order for the power and the anointing placed on the inside of you to work, you have to nurture it with the prayer life. You, you got to bring yourself closer to Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus told them, in effect, you don't live close enough to me so when it was time for the power on the inside of you to work Lord have mercy it did not work because you're not close enough to the power source Uh, Lord have mercy I need you to type real quickly how's your power yeah, just type that. How's your power? I know about your gifting, but how's your power? I know about your talent, but how's, how's your power? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what are you doing to secure the power that came with the gift, that came with the calling? So the question is, when I call you, will you let me down? Whew. Lord have mercy. A lot of times we shift the responsibility of helping our brothers and sisters To the church at large, we shift the responsibility to the pastor. But if your brother or sister calls you, will you let them down? Will you you let them down? You see, God gives us a gift, but unless we maintain close contact with him, the gift may wither and lose its power. Unless we maintain close contact with God through fasting, prayer, meditation, and discipline, living, uh, we, we, and, and righteous living, we lose two things no matter how great our giftings may be. We lose vitality. We lose that living power. That thing then becomes a performance instead of offering to God. That's why you have to be careful that you don't get caught up in what you do in the temple. What you do in the church that you miss out on being connected to the one that you're doing it for. Then every time you jump on an instrument, every time you grab a microphone, every time you do your due diligence, it becomes a performance and it operates with no power. Then we lose humility. We lose humility because we then begin to think that because of our gifting, things are coming to pass. Things are getting done. But no, no, we lose our humility because we shift the glory from God to ourselves. Jesus shakes the minds of these disciples, letting them know your power will work, but it will only work if you're close to the source. Don't let your brother and sister down. Don't let your fellow brother and sister down. If they need something from you, don't let them down. Make sure that your power is intact. Make sure that your anointing is connected to the power source. Make sure your gift is connected to the power source. These kind only come through prayer, through prayer. So my my question to you tonight is, will you let me down? That's the question that those around you, your family is asking you, your your friends are asking you, those who are in need of Jesus Christ are asking you, will you let me down? I I came, I came to church, I came to church and because I I came to the church because you are a disciple of him, you you, you represent him, you you said that you you stand up for him. So I, I came to the church to receive, I came to the church. To get so I, I came to you because you said you were a Christian. I, I came to you because you said you were saved. I came to you because you said you had the Holy Ghost. Will you let me down? Hear the cries of those who need Jesus Christ. Need the, hear the cries of those who need deliverance, need to be set free, need a breakthrough in, in their life. We cannot let them down. Listen, I pray this word has blessed you. I pray that it helped you. I pray that it opened your mind. I pray that it pushed you to a place of conviction where we have to get closer to Jesus Christ 
And I pray that it pushed you to a place that you want to say, I'll never let my brother or sister down. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share. We thank you for the convicting word that pushes us to a place of action, also pushes us closer to you, God. We don't want to let anyone down. We don't want to misrepresent you. We don't want to misrepresent the church in the name of Jesus. So God, strengthen us. Allow us to have a closer relationship with you that we can complete the assignment you have given us, that our anointing will have power, our gift will have power in the name of Jesus. We bless you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, before you go deeper, Life Church family, I want you to share a seed with the church. I want you to share a seed right there on your screen is the information to give through Cash App, through our website, or you can call into our church office. I want you to make sure that you uh, give during this time. Make sure that you're sowing during this time. Uh, we want to be diligent in our tithing and our seed sowing during this time. So make sure that you're sowing during this time while you're sowing that seed let's pray for that seed father in the name of jesus thank you for those who have connected to the vision of this house connected to the vision of our church and are sowing now in the name of jesus because we believe in what you have called us to do thank you so much now god allow us to receive a harvest from this seed we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. Please pray for your brothers and sisters. And please don't let them down. God bless.